In this video, what are the basic molecular shapes? We're going to take the two-dimensional Lewis dot structures from the previous videos and convert those into a 3D structure. And so the way we're going to do that is by identifying some basic shapes and then in the next video, expanding on those shapes. So if we think about a molecule in three dimensions, so specifically, let's think about methane. For methane, the number of valence electrons is four plus four, which gives you eight. Put your carbon in the center, draw your four hydrogens, and you've used all of your Lewis, or all of your electrons. So when we think about this in three dimensions, the bond angles are 90 degrees, and it is a flat, or what we're gonna call planar molecule. So when we think about a molecule, the electrons, both within the bonds and lone pairs, want to repel each other. And so we need to account for the repulsion as well as the fact that molecules take up 3D space. So if you, <clears throat> and as you'll see in this video, take a Lewis dot structure of methane and convert that into a 3D structure, the bond angle here has been measured to be 109.5 degrees. And it's in three dimensions. So this hydrogen and this hydrogen are in the plane of the board, in the plane of the paper. This down here at the bottom is out in front, and this is behind. The way I will start to draw these, and we'll go over this in multiple videos, is a carbon connected to four things with a wedge that means in front, a dash, which is the one right here. So this is a dash. This is our wedge, wedge in front, dash behind, and the ones that are lined are in the plane of the board. And so this structure that I drew all the way on the right is the same as the one with the balls and sticks, which is quite different visually than the Lewis dot structure. So we are going to account for this repulsion in a new theory called valence shell electron pair repulsion or VSEPR. So this theory accounts for the angles at which bonds can be the furthest apart. Because the way electrons, which are both negatively charged, can be the most stable is to be as far apart as possible. And that happens in the repulsion, and so we can identify these based on their steric number. So a steric number, most simply put, is how many things are connected to the central atom. So if we have a central atom A, and we have three things connected to it, this is a steric number of three. If you have an A that is connected to five things, this is a steric number of five. So the steric number is things, meaning either lone pairs or atoms. And so we'll start with all atoms and then we'll upgrade to lone pairs around the central atom. But these are the base geometries. So let's look at a steric number of two, a linear molecule. We have two things connected to the central atom. So there are two examples we can think of, BeCl2 and CO2. So beryllium, while it is a metal, does have substantial molecular character. And so the reasons for that are really outside of the purpose of these videos, but beryllium can, and we can see that based on the electronegativity difference. So the structure of beryllium in a Lewis dot structure looks like this, with its lone pairs around the chlorine. And so the, so we have a Lewis dot, followed by the Vesper structure, and the structure is virtually identical where we are gonna to continue to show all of the electrons on all structures. So in this case, both the Lewis dot structure and the Vesper structure are the same. So for CO2, we have carbon double bonded to oxygens, both of which have two lone pairs. So if you look at these, and I'll highlight in the beryllium and in the CO2, we have one, two bonds. Now for CO2, there are in fact four bonds connected, but just two items. So just this and just this. So it is the number of things, atoms or a lone pair connected to the central atom or 
but not the number of bonds. So the, we have a Lewis dot, we have a fast first structure. In this structure, it looks identical. And in all of these, our compounds are 180 degrees apart. So a general geometry would look like this, where these are 180. And this base geometry is linear, which kind of makes sense because if you have two things connected, the farthest they can be is 180. So in each of these, we're gonna add one more item. So we are gonna add a third complex. So we are gonna look at BF3 and COH2 where the boron or the carbon are the central atom. So the Lewis dot structure for both of these, we have boron in the center connected to three fluorines, all of which do have lone pairs. And for COH2, the Lewis dot structure ends up with this. And so if you look at this, you have two 90 degree angles and one 180 degree angles. It is a planar molecule, but the Vesper structure says that the furthest apart three items could be, would be 120 degrees. So when we draw the molecular shape, it's going to look like this. And in this case, this degree is 120 degrees. And so we'll also see this for the carbon. And so this is also approximately 120 degrees. So this base geometry is trigonal planar and the molecule is planar. And that just means it's flat. So you could rotate this and look down the side of the molecule and it would all be in a single plane. So we now have looked at steric number of two and a steric number of three. And we, based on what we learned about those dot structures, the most things connected to the central atom is six in an expanded octet. So in this case, we are gonna look at four, five, and six next. So let's connect four things to the central atom. So in this case, we're going to look at methane, CH4. So we looked at this in the first part of the video where we have this Lewis dot structure that shows you 90 degrees. And now we want to be able to draw this in three dimensions where we have a carbon and these hydrogens. And this here is approximately 109. 0.5. So if you were to draw this in a base structure, we have a base A with four X's around it. So you will be expected to be able to draw these. In this tetrahedral base geometry, it's a three-dimensional structure. A steric number of two and three are quite planar. So in this case, we have the two red bonds in the plane of the board. The blue is a wedge, it's coming towards you or coming out of the screen, and the green is behind the screen. So as we look at these, we wanna make sure that we can draw this. It's not essential that you get 109.5 degrees, but it is essential that it is not 90 degrees. So we need somewhere between them. In this tetrahedral molecule, it is in three dimensions. So let's look at the next, a steric number of five. So these are called trigonal bipyramidal. And so a good example of that would be PF5. And the Lewis dot structure looks like this. So you could imagine, as we think about this, thinking about a way in which these five items could be as far apart as possible. You could imagine that you could create a flat molecule that looked kind of like a starfish where they were all far apart. But the reality is that doesn't account for the third dimension. So maybe there's a way that we can distribute those in two different arrangements. So we are gonna combine the linear and trigonal planar geometry 
to where we get, oops, we need to start with the A in the center here. We're going to have two of which are going to be 180 degrees apart and three of which are 120 degrees apart. So we have a 90 degree angle here and 120 degrees here. And so you have the axial and these are considered the equatorial, meaning they're around the center of the molecule. So let's go back to our PF5. And so we can redraw this structure with the phosphorus connected with its five bonds. And those five bonds are structured here. And so what we can see is as we don't forget to add all of our lone pairs, even around the terminal atoms, we can see that this structure has two different bond angles in the base geometry of trigonal bipyramidal. So let's look if we go to our most diverse structure of steric number of six, which is called octahedral. So we can also have SF6, which looks somewhat like this with our six fluorines around it. And we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our lone pairs. So based on the steric number of five or the trigonal bipyramidal, we need to think about a way that we can orient this in three dimensions that takes into account all of the possibilities. So in the steric number of six, the reality is the furthest apart they can get is 90 degrees in all dimensions. So we're gonna put our central atom here. We are gonna have an axial and equatorial plane. but all of the bond angles are 90 degrees. So we have, in this case, axial, these are equatorial, and they are all 90 degrees. So in this arrangement, you could imagine that you could spin the molecule in 3D and it will always look the same, which was not the case for the steric number of five. So as we think about the octahedral, there are six different places where we could put an atom. So if we redraw our SF6, that structure is gonna look like this. And don't forget, you do need to show all of your lone pairs, which does take a, just a second. So now we can see that these are all 90 degrees. And in this case for octahedral, we have two in the plane of the paper, two that come out towards you and two that go behind you. So these five basic structures, steric numbers two, three, four, five, and six are the base geometries. All of these have atoms connected around them. And so what we'll see in the next video is how does the structure change once we start to sub out or change a bond for a lone pair?